again to some of you for the very first time, um, to some of you we've already spoken to and have worked with and perhaps have even registered you for your classes, um, to the MBA program at North Carolina ENT State University. Um, we are really excited about um, a great um, semester for the fall of 2019. Um, yesterday we had your counterparts, the in-class orientation, and we had um, um, about 30 uh, individuals uh, there that are joining and that have started and registered and uh, had a good time with them. And so um, uh, we want to do the same with you uh, and give you a lot of good information and hopefully um, uh, get through the inf information piece um, fairly quickly so that we can hopefully dialogue via uh, virtually uh, about questions that you may have um, so we can get those answered. Uh, so, so first and foremost, um, the university um, is, is growing um, 10,700 undergraduate, well, to total students, uh, 200 acre campus, um, uh, and, you know, business colleges, college of engineering, um, college of ag, uh, arts and sciences, uh, just doing some wonderful, wonderful things around the, the world, quite frankly, as it relates to our research. Uh, the business college is certainly a, a major part of that success. And one of the things that we really are, are trying to do is to stay very market centric so that we're able to, to, to prepare um, skilled, ethically conscious leaders, business leaders, um, through a lot of the research that our faculty are going to work with you and integrate inside of curriculum around innovative instruction around a lot of community engagement, around engagement even with, with, with corporations uh, in some of our classes that, that, that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, so that's, the, that, that, that's our mission within the College of Business and Economics. You should know uh, that we are um, the hallmark of quality. 1% of business uh, colleges around the world uh, have the coveted AACSB accreditation. Um, I know we've had some conversations with some of you as it relates to courses transferring, may have taken from another university. One of the first hurdles that has to be crossed is does that university that your um, course comes from, is it AACSB accredited? Um, because that, that, that's, that's the first hurdle that, that has to, uh, to be crossed. Um, and that, that accreditation says that we've got the right faculty teaching the right courses, we have the right types of metrics that we ensure are inside of these courses, such as critical learning, um, communication, collaboration, global mindset, um, a lot of uh, metrics that are that are placed inside this curriculum um, that ACSB measures to ensure that we're delivering a high quality program. And so we've been accredited since 1979 from a business college perspective and the accounting program since 1986. Uh, so it's um, really, really a good thing. Um, our MBA overall, in class and online, has four concentrations. From an online perspective that, that began in the summer of 2017, um, we have the human resource management concentration, the supply chain management concentration, and the general MBA. Um, our accounting concentration is not yet online, although this semester we are working with some technology that um, uh, will enable uh, the more higher level accounting concentration courses uh, to be, um, I'll say, rightly and high quality delivered. So that when you're taking an online course in one of those high uh, end accounting concentration courses, that you're able to, to really uh, engage very, very well with a faculty member. You're able to really see what's going on on a, on a, on a, on a real um, you know, glass, uh, whiteboard. Uh, so so it, we just we really are trying to test out some technology before we launch the accounting um, program fully online. Um, so 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 more more to come on that. Um, the activities and resources that we have, and, and, and in, a, in another slide, I'll talk about the outstanding alums and our executive advisory committee. Um, these are are open to even online students. Um, so. The, the, um, a lot of the professional development workshops, we have, we have a new um, graduate lab that we're going to be able to virtually uh, do some things like the Closing Bell Speaker Series, um, where you'll be able to, to, to zoom in and take part in things that some in-class students only took part in. 
Um, certainly some of the case competitions that you are more than welcome to participate in if you choose. Uh, that, would, that, that would certainly uh, require you to, to physically travel to wherever we're presenting, uh, but we certainly would open that opportunity up to our online students. Um, certainly the uh, internship and job placement assistance is, is, is very, very uh, front and center for every student in class and online. Um, uh, the, as a matter of fact, we'll talk a little bit about career uh, readiness, uh, or really, as we like to call it, first destination readiness. We're trying to help you with your first destination um, in terms of your career. Uh, we have a large career fair coming up um, uh, very shortly in September, and I'll talk to you about that when we get there. Um, but lots of things that, um, that, that we do outside the classroom in terms of activities. Um, our alum are really second to none. Um, and many of our alum have, have even come back um, to serve on our executive advisory council. And that, that council really helps to shape the vision, um, to shape the curriculum, to shape uh, the funding mechanism that, 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 that helps us to, to do a lot of these great things inside of the business college. Um, so, so Willie Dees from Merck and Pat Zoller from um, um, Nuremberg Burnham Group, um, Tiffany Eubanks, Corporate Vice President at, at, Vice, uh, at Bank of America, Dimitri Stockton. I mean, just so many great, great companies, Sam's Club, um, you know, Dixon Hughes Goodman, I could just continue to name them, uh, that are not just uh, folks on the board, but, but who really are engaged with, with our students, both undergrad and grad, and are really committed to helping us stay world-class uh, as a business college. So switching gears to talk a bit about the curriculum. So your, your curriculum is 36 hours. Now for some folks, um, you took from one to four foundation courses, depending upon who you are, depending upon what your transcript said when the committee looked at it. So for example, if we were looking to make sure that you had uh, micro and micro micro and macroeconomics or statistics or management courses uh, or or principles one of accounting principles two of accounting and 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 not just whether you had it but you took it and earned grade b or better and 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 these foundation courses are not punitive in nature we want to make sure that you have them under your belt so that when you hit your first economics graduate level course um, you do well it's all about trying to make sure that our students are very very successful so when you take a look at this slide and you see the 12 hours there, those 12 hours are not going towards your 36 hour um, requirement for the degree, but, but if you had to take them, they absolutely help to determine uh, your ability to succeed in those 36 hours. Um, and so uh, we, we've had, we have, we have a special cohort of students from AT&T and we certainly welcome you if you're on this line. Um, and, um, and, and so we, we've gotten some things that we could um, do with AT&T employees as well. So uh, you guys um, and, and ladies uh, certainly can feel free to contact our office uh, to work through your foundation courses um, with us. Um, uh, we've, we've done that with, with, with many folks um, already. So when you look at the first eight courses, those are all the core courses. Those core courses are the same for every uh, one of our concentrations. And, and you can see the accounting, the economics, the financial management, the operational um, management, the management of organizational behavior, uh, the business analytics, the corporate strategy, and the strategic marketing. I mean, if we just stopped there, it'd be a great solid MBA. I think the thing that differentiates us is that we also give you a concentration. And I think that sets our graduates apart. Um, uh, we, we have um, been vetted by the marketplace. Uh, we're 90 uh, plus percent um, uh, career placement um, uh, with, with our students, which means that many of them, 90, above 90 percent of them, have jobs even before they graduate. And those jobs um, are, are, are great, solid, well paying uh, positions. And so, um, and I think one of the things that helps, helps to support that uh, are these differentiated concentrations that we have. So accounting, for example, uh, advanced income tax, um, application and financial accounting, advanced audit and advanced cost. Um, these courses 
um, are, are certainly, uh, we, we add to those courses. We have other courses that are on the books as well that um, we uh, could uh, give to students to take. So we're, we're, we just, we, we really want to have a good menu of courses that help students uh, kind of get to where they want to be. Some students want to take the CPA exam. Some students just want to work uh, inside of companies like Georgia Pacific or, or even DA, a company like Dixon Hughes Goodman and not necessarily do uh, CPA, the, sit for the CPA. But, but um, I think the degree helps to facilitate both of those options. The human resource management concentration, um, very strong in the marketplace, um, um, staffing, compensation and benefits, uh, employee relations and development, which is a very, very um, nice piece to, to have when you're discussing uh, that with employers, uh, because those are, 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 are some, it, 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 you, you get into leadership development inside of uh, this area. Uh, leadership development is, is, a, is a, a big piece uh, inside of um, corporate America now, because many corporations can't um, afford to uh, externally train every single employee. And so they have, quote unquote, centers of leadership inside of corporations. Uh, and so having someone who knows uh, how to do it, employee relations and development and understands uh, professional development uh, is, is critical. Uh, then the last course is human resource management strategy. Um, um, and when you look at supply chain management, um, our supply chain management is another very, very um, highly demanded uh, concentration. Um, many of our courses, uh, even in the core, uh, not just the concentration courses, but also the core, uh, have been integrated with uh, big data concepts, um, certainly with some of the supply chain management courses, uh, looking at how blockchain uh, is affecting uh, how we do supply chain management. Um, so things like global supply chain design and courses uh, in procurement and supply chain systems and, and strategic logistics um, getting you uh, used to uh, data packages such as uh, using Tableau or SAP dashboard uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a part of a, a skill set, a tool set that you'll have uh, when you walk into a company already having that experience um, is, is, is also uh, important. Um, when you look at our general concentration, what we've tried to do here is take some of um, some of the courses from other concentrations and pull it um, into a, a, a small set of four courses that gives you a difference uh, or differentiation with even, a, even within a general concentration. So what do I mean by that? So you've got supply chain management under your belt. You've got data analytics under your belt. You've got organizational communication there. And one of the most popular courses, not, not just for only for our general MBAs, but, but even across the other concentrations is this course called Management 785. And that's the practicum internship. Uh, that's where we partner with companies as, as large as the United States Department of Ag, um, USDA. Uh, we just wrote the market entry strategy for them. Uh, USDA Shanghai uh, traveled to China at the end of the semester, pitched that, um, uh, that, that market entry strategy uh, to at, at, a, at one of their largest food uh, an ag trade shows in the world. Um, got a chance to see a lot of the companies in the United States who want to do business uh, in China and help to, uh, you know, bring that new market entry strategy so that they can better leverage their products. Um, so it was a, just a wonderful opportunity. So we, we go as large as that and, and, and as small as some, some regional companies here in Greensboro, small funeral homes or small um, um, uh, chair of furniture manufacturers who want human resource management plans or who need a small supply chain work or who, and, so, and we partner with those companies and, and act as consultants uh, and you get a chance to use your MBA for that semester to help that company solve a business problem. Pardon me, Dr. Gladney. Yes. Okay. We uh, did have a qu question um, come in. Uh, can you pause for a question now? that's related to what you're talking about? <laughs> let, me, let me get to the end of the section if they can hold that. Okay. Be great. All right. And, <clears throat> and let, me, let me just mention while we pause, if you can ask your question uh, through the question and answer rather than uh, the chat, that will be more efficient for us. 
So uh, thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Glass. All right. Um, the foundation courses, uh, as we talked about, um, you know, when we, when we started, we benchmarked our institutional peers and even some aspirational peers. So folks around um, the same city and state that we live in, universities, and then, the, then even some national ones. And typically, um, um, universities and business schools will offer um, about four foundation courses to give people like me. Uh, I was an electrical engineer, undergrad, and I did my MBA uh, at the University of Rochester. And, um, and, and so you, you have some courses to help give you a foundation. And, and, and so I, as I spoke about it earlier, not punitive, but, but necessary so that when you get to those um, graduate level courses, you have an idea of the language of, of, of financial concepts. Even if you were like me and you had a good quant background as an engineer, I didn't have the language down and I didn't understand, you know, things in capital budgets, for example, and swaps and puts and calls and, 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 and other things like that that we had to deal with. But um, it, it, these are truly good courses. Um, I think um, um, students uh, who take them and, and, and move forward uh, have, have, have done well because of them. Um, and and, and we, we even heard last semester from students who were new students last semester. At the end of the, of the semester, we, we heard that, hey, I'm glad I did this because I found out that, yeah, I took micro and macro, but, but it was very early in my undergraduate um, uh, time. And, and so I, I kind of have forgotten some of those principles as a, um, a fashion merchandising uh, undergraduate major or as a psychology undergraduate major. And so, so, so we had students that are coming out saying that, 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 that they thought that it was a, a good experience. Um, so let me, let me, I will pause and take, a, and take a couple of questions on what we just covered and then I'm gonna keep moving um, forward. So Joe, what was the first question? Okay, uh, Dr. Gladney, the first question from Ashley is are you able to attain, obtain dual concentration, i.e. supply chain and HR management? So, so I'll, the, the direct answer is from a graduate college perspective, the answer is no. Um, but from an experiential perspective, tangibly, the answer is yes. So let me explain the no. The no is no, because your degree when you graduate will be if you applied for the for the human resource management uh, MBA, it'll be your degree is going to be an MBA, and and your concentration will be human resource management. All right. Um, however, the yes mean that you could finish your thirty six hours in human resource management and decide to take some supply chain management courses to differentiate yourself and have both of those tangible um, in class slash online in class, uh, you, you, since you're online students, you, you can still have that, that, that experience and have that, that, that transferable knowledge under your belt, um, but you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't your, your degree wouldn't be human resource management, supply chain management, MBA. So, so, so hopefully that will help that person's question. Okay. Uh, the I next, have a, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a uh, question uh, from one of our attendees. Is the general MBA concentration courses required or can they be substituted with other courses from the MBA program? Um, so the only substitute that can be made for any core or concentration course, general HRM, supply chain management accounting, are going to be equivalents. So suppose that there was something that happened and then um, a course wasn't offered and we had to find another course for you. So yes, there could be a substitute, but that substitute has to be an equivalent course. So data analytics, for example, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the course uh, Management 740, data analytics and business intelligence applications. So we want you to have that data analytics and business, business intelligence applications experience. And so if the faculty member that teaches it is ill and can't teach it, for example, one semester, and we have to find another course for you, we absolutely could substitute it, but we want to put something in there uh, that, that um, gives you that analytics background, um, especially since that's the, the, uh, the, the trend 
uh, that is um, pervasive currently in the marketplace. So one course that might be substituted might be a, a course on big data uh, or a course on uh, blockchain technology. Um, but so we, we will work with students individually in those cases to, to, to craft the right substitute course um, for, for anything that may, that, that may need a substitute. All right, let's move forward. These next few slides simply say that, so we get, a, we get this question a lot, how fast can I finish my MBA? And the answer is you can move at your own pace. So when you look at the first, this, this slide, this is a student that needed to take all four financial, four foundation courses, but they decided that, you know what, I'm gonna take four courses per semester and finish in two years. Certainly you could even take summers and finish even shorter than that. The semicolon, the however is, four courses online when I'm working with a family or maybe even as a single man or woman is a lot of courses, right? So um, I, I just warn people um, about getting into those waters with four. Um, a lot of our online students um, will do a three um, course semester and here is uh, what that would look like. Um, maybe they don't have to have any foundation courses um, uh, and they started with the Accounting 710 and they moved forward. Um, you certainly could mix it up and do two courses per semester and then one course summer one, one course summer two. Um, and when we talk about summers, summers we typically only offer most of the core courses. So Accounting 710 is offered and Econ 708 and uh, Marketing 720. I'm sorry, excuse me, Management 720. So, so th those are some courses that we typically offer in the summer. We do not hardly ever offer any concentration courses in the summer because those courses are so detailed and we want to really um, uh, make sure that we get, get that done during the semester and not have to get it done in a truncated six week period where you've got to cram a lot of data within a short amount of time. Uh, but, but here's simply another um, opportunity to set your own pace. Somebody does four courses a semester for three semesters, no summers, finish in a year and a half. So there, there are lots of different paths that our students have taken to, um, to um, complete the program. I want to put this slide up um, and just talk a bit about it for a second. There is a partnership that we have um, with Thurgood Marshall Hennessy. Um, you might want to think, what is Hennessy, the, 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 um, um, the spirits company, uh, doing with Thurgood Marshall? Um, they, they gave the Thurgood Marshall College Fund about a $30 million investment, and so therefore they have naming rights now. So it's Thurgood Marshall Hennessy. And they have a very a national um, uh, leadership development program for students, first semester, first semester MBA students in particular. Um, it's a $30,000 opportunity um, as it relates to um, uh, your um, tuition. Uh, part of that $30,000 goes towards um, your, your philanthropic work. I think that's like a $10,000 part of that for philanthropic work that you would do in the community. Uh, there is leadership development that, that they give you. They fly you to New York City. Uh, that, was, that was what they did this summer. Uh, we had one of our students who actually was selected as a Hennessy Thurgood Marshall Fellow, um, and they gave him uh, life coaching, professional development. I mean, it's a wonderful program. Um, so you'll be seeing some emails come from us um, and maybe Thurgood Marshall Hennessy uh, about application. I encourage you to apply. Um, the application, if you are selected, uh, will be a phone screen. It'll be a Zoom or a Skype type of an interview. Uh, there'll be a, an essay that, that's required. Um, and so we want our students both in class and online to have that opportunity. So when you see um, information about not only the Thurgood Marshall Hennessy opportunity, but any opportunity, uh, please jump on it um, uh, and, and take full advantage of it, all right? More to come via the email on that. Um, so, it's, so it's not only in the classroom, but it's also outside the classroom for us. Um, I think that the, the, many of the things that we tagline our, our shirts and other things, we say student-centered business mentor. a and has always been a very student-centered place, even when I was here for undergrad. 
um, in terms of us wanting to really put our hands uh, and arms around our students to make sure that they do very, very well. But we're also business mentors. And what we have done um, quite successfully uh, have been getting involved in a lot of case competitions. We uh, presented the National Black MBA uh, Association with Fiat Chrysler. Um, we've been finalists out of um, 60, 70 universities around the country, not just HBCUs, but you know, um, any business college is, is coming to the National Black MBA co Conference. Um, so we, we've come back with some hardware, um, but we have not won yet. So hopefully our case team that's going this year will come back with the prize. Uh, the prize um, is about a $25,000, $30,000 check that's split between the case competition team, um, you know, not the advisors. Um, and, and, and certainly even if, even if we didn't compete, <coughs> excuse me, going to the conference, there's a huge uh, career fair. And uh, but that career fair is, is supported by hundreds of companies who are looking to hire MBAs. Uh, and, and who do hire MBAs on the spot? Uh, KeyBank is another case competition in, in, uh, in, in Cleveland, Ohio, that we go to and we support and we compete at. Uh, Howard University, uh, there are other battle of the brain competitions that, that we do, and so lots of outside the, the classroom. Um, so again, um, the National Black MBA Conference is, is, is the $25,000 prize. Uh, the, it, whoever wins gets to go to the to Chrysler's headquarters. Um, Ten thousand dollar prize for the key bank competition. Uh, it's a more it's a smaller competition, so it's three participants per team, um, and you're trying to solve a current key bank problem, and you're pit pitching, presenting to corporate management inside of key bank, as well as when you you go to the uh, Fiat Chrysler uh, case competition. Um, Five thousand dollar competition for the uh, the Howard University Minority MBA case. Um, so. Uh, we we have a have a global program for our students. Um, we've done China. Um, some of our students have gone to South Africa. Um, there have been many different trips across the past few years uh, to give our give our students uh, a really really good global experience. Uh, this was us this past May. Um, we got a chance to not only um, do the work with the USDA, uh, but who uh, we didn't know that uh, that Terry uh, Bransford. Uh, who is the U.S. ambassador to China, uh, former uh, Iowa governor, uh, was going to be uh, at, we knew he was going to be there. We had no, no idea that we would meet him and have an opportunity to sit and talk about the current trade uh, relationship that the United States and China uh, is in the middle of and, and, and one in which he is helping to negotiate. So, so our, our MBA students are right at the cutting edge. Um, not only did we do work with the USDA, but the trip you get a chance to do all the cultural types of things, the Great Wall of China, uh, you know, the, the Bund in, in Shanghai, um, the train ride from Shanghai to Beijing, but we're meeting with PricewaterhouseCoopers, we're meeting and doing the plant tour with Hyundai Motor Corporation, we're meeting with uh, some of the largest capital uh, investment companies in the world. So, so it's, it's just a phenomenal experience uh, for, for both um, uh, the, 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 for not only the China trip, but for any trip that we take out of the country. So, so it's not only in the, in the classroom, but it's also outside the classroom. Last thing that we're going to talk about <clears throat> here uh, really is a quick piece on ethics. Um, so I, I'll, I'll just at the beginning, before we even get into the slides, say as an online student, you have a responsibility to, to, to maintain very high ethical standards. Um, I'll even narrow it down. It's when you are writing papers, plagiarism is not an option. Um, it, every faculty member that you um, will write for will absolutely have software that they will put your papers inside of to, to first check to make sure it's your work. So for, as an MBA student, as, as a professional, as many of you are, in, in careers, perhaps already, that, that's just a no option for us. Um, lots of uh, group me's and, and, and all kinds of you know social media um, uh, collaboration tools out there. There, there is no reason for students to um, you know take an exam or take a paper and then post that paper on your group me uh, so that other, other students who haven't done it yet can get it. It, it. It's no reason for any of those things. And and we have a zero tolerance policy 
um, for that here in the business college. So, so, so we haven't had much of an issue of that with respect to our MBA students. We say it to both undergrads and graduate students, um, you know, as technology continues to be pervasive, it's hard to track it, um, but please um, don't engage in it. Um, uh, and so, so ethical leadership, <clears throat> everybody, um, not only the executive, but I, I, everybody throughout the, the, the organization has got, to, has got to demonstrate ethical behavior in their actions. Um, you know, so it's, it's from awareness to education to action to leading in terms of this ethical uh, leadership. And that's why we want to talk about it. And so, so what do we mean by ethics? Um, um, this image says a thousand words. Here's what it's not. It's not just slipping into something more ethical. It's not just the wolf slipping into some cheap clothing, but I'm really ideologically um, uh, have poor ethics. It, it's not that at all. Um, instead, it embodies um, um, uh, the expectation of conduct about how I should behave based on more duties and virtues, um, which, which themselves are derived from principles of values of right and wrong. It's, 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 it's making sure that even, even when you leave this university, that you don't trade financial expediency for moral degradation. So, so what's the, well, what's the good in, 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 in having an MBA to make all this money but you really can't spend it in an economy because it's just been so horrible from a morality perspective. And so we need to know right and wrong values, principles, and then do it. Um, so, so, so not good ethics is good business, but good ethics is just good. All right. That's how, that's, that's how we want you to, you to frame it. Um, so, so, so when you think about identifying your values, ethics as perception, <laughs> the, the image there, um, you know, she, she's, uh, was, it, it, you know, am I, am, I, am I acting ethically? How does one answer? It depends on who's answering the question. So you've got somebody in jail, somebody outside, and it's, it's the mother uh, saying those vertical bars give you a really, really nice glimmering effect, dear. Uh, yeah, it, so, so, so it, it, it can't uh, be that. Um, it's, it's about you knowing you. Um, that's what I like about the university setting, graduate school or undergrad. You, you get a chance to know you. Um, I love these two quotes. H.L. Uh, uh, McKinnon, uh, to die for an idea is unquestionably noble, but how much nobler would it be if men died for ideas that were true? Um, Shakespeare's um, uh, Act 3, Scene 2, uh, line 14 and 16, uh, would you have me um, false to my nature? Rather say, I play the man I am. So it's, 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 it's knowing yourself. Um, what would you quit over? What would be the red flag for you? Um, uh, and and so, so, so th those are questions that we've got to answer. Two extremes, social relativism, or something that we call um, 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 this, this whole idea that, that if you're asking society, um, whether it considers your actions ethical, then it's against society standards that you're going to be judged. Or the other extreme, universalism, if you're asking whether some omniscient being considers your actions ethical, then it's against your concept of that being standards that's going to be judged. And so you've got these, these, these bookends, and you've got to find out where you stand um, on, on those in, in, that, in that spectrum. Um, and, and you've got to understand that everything that's 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 legal is not ethical <laughs> and so so it's and then we're being very very clear here at ant as it relates to what the standard is um and so so in order to challenge somebody you, you you've got to be aware of your own personal beliefs um so so in order to know our values students need to explore uh them all right so so you can get into a healthy debate a lot, a lot of misconceptions and then we're almost done um, ethics <clears throat> can't be taught. Of course they can be taught. I, I just said it, legality equals morality. It does not. <laughs> morality doesn't necessarily lead the profits either. Um, everybody is, is ethical. We know that's not true. Uh, so lots and lots and lots of misconceptions. Um, but but I, as you start your MBA, um, I always like to just talk to our students about just being ethical leaders. 
knowing that someone in your work group, even as an online student, you're going to be put into some 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 work team. That's how we that's how we work in, in, across the country and really around the world. And, and inevitably, somebody in that team is not going to pull their weight or you're going to notice something that may be a little on the unethical side. And it's your responsibility to lead through that and um, and, and and help present a different standard. Um, our relationship with the graduate college. So you're going to hear us talk a lot about a graduate plan of study and perhaps other things inside the graduate college. Um, the graduate college is our partner. We are housed within the College of Business and Economics, but the graduate college really has administrative policy related um, oversight of all graduate programs at the university. And so they do things like you know, helping with fundraising, quality control, um, you know, um, the, the advocacy as it relates to um, somebody wanting to appeal a grade or, a, or a appeal a certain particular policy. Those things go through the graduate college. When you want to change your concentration from human resource management to supply chain management, certainly we have to approve it here, but it has to also go through the graduate college. So. So, so I want you to make sure that you understand that when we are always referencing back to the graduate college. Um, the, the, the graduate plan of study um, is uh, something that many of you have already received, received an email on, but there is at ncat.edu slash TGC. Um, you can see it here on your, on your screen. This is their, um, the graduate college's website. There certainly is this wonderful um, policy manual that I'm sure you you won't read all of tomorrow, <laughs> but um, there there is a um, a plan of study. As a matter of fact, the easiest place to find to find your plan of study uh, is <clears throat> the um, our website. So NCAT MBA NCAT MBA dot com, and when you go over to the student tab and you click and hold it, one of the options is graduate plan of study. When you hover over that, you'll see all the concentrations, both in class and online, uh, and that plan of study is there. You can use it. It's a fillable PDF document. Um, it's, you should download it to your desktop first and then begin to, um, to, to, to complete it. And so trying to complete it online and print it. Sometimes there are some errors uh, that students are running into that way. Um, we want you to turn these in your first semester. It is the roadmap for your degree compliance uh, requirements. Uh, it's the, it's the quasi contract that says these are the courses that we're going to have um, for you to graduate. Um, now it's a plan, so plans can change, but when it changes, we sit down and, and we talk that through uh, and we make the update to the plan of study and we make the change. Uh, so, so you'll be hearing that from us, I'm sure. Um, things that you typically come up around questions that we that we integrate or go back and forth the graduate college on are how many how, if I'm if I'm coming from another university that is ACSB accredited and then the department chair at A&T and the business college has deemed that the course that I took was appropriate and, and, and it can transfer uh, how many classes so it's up to 40% of the required credit hours so we have 36 credit hours so 40% of the 36, so about four courses could, could be transferred. They, that, that, that they have to come over as a B or better, so you had to have made a B in that class for the transfer. And if the course is older than five years old, they normally won't be accepted for transfer credit, right? Uh, but I'm sure if any of you have those questions, you'll be talking to us about that. Um, <clears throat> if you change programs, Typic, so first of all, the program change won't take place until after your first semester here. And then it's going to include a new plan of study. Um, you don't have to panic about not being able to change from supply chain management to accounting your first semester because all four concentrations all have the same core course requirements. So you've got to take them anyway. And you're certainly not going to take eight courses in one semester. So, so there's nothing really to, to be concerned about. You can continue to move through and progress through. At the end of the next semester, you'll be able to switch over to the new concentration. Um, so, so, but again, um, please, uh, you know, contact our office if, if, you, if you are thinking about uh, doing that. Um, if you are um, trying to get back in and re-enroll, 
has been some questions. Um, you you have you, you you you're not enrolled for for not more than one non summer semester. Uh, you've got to be in good or, or ac um, um, academic probation standard only. There's an application fee and um, a lot of the, the health center and the campus safety and and I think there's even one other uh, Aggie alert has got to be completed before you before you re-enroll. So um, those are just just trying to give you some questions that that, that we've received. <clears throat> Give you the answer to those questions now. All right. So we certainly thank you for joining um, and, and, and choosing to come. We're really excited about it. We certainly would love to answer any questions now um, and then post those questions. Um, please um, email us. As a matter of fact, we're going to um, probably email you again uh, by concentration, another email that says, if you don't have your plan of study, here it is again. Uh, please get it completed and please uh, let's get started with registration if you have not already done so. Uh, so this time I'll pause for questions. Okay. Um, there, uh, uh, first, before Cheryl goes to the questions, we have some questions there. Uh, but uh, is anybody having a problem asking the questions, uh, using the question and answer? Uh, most people are not having a problem because we see questions here. But if you are having a problem with questions, uh, then you can use the chat facility, but please use the question and answer first. So I think we have all the questions in the question and answer, and uh, you can raise your hand if you're having an issue with that. But uh, Cheryl, you can go ahead with the questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Frazier. Uh, Dr. Gladney, we have a question. At any point in the program, will we be required to come to campus to complete coursework? No, uh, you will not. Um, the the um, um, program is, is, is online. Uh, the only time you, would, you could come to, to, to campus, first of all, you can come to campus anytime you would like to come. Um, we certainly invite you to come for our career fairs in the fall and the spring. Um, we invite you uh, to come to, to anything that you see that you'd like to be a part of. But um, there, there, there's no requirement for you to physically show up on campus for an online, for an online course. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, does the in-class MBA option have evening classes? Yes. All of our courses uh, are on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday uh, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and um, so, so those, those are uh, well suited for a lot of working professionals. Um, um, th this is all in, in, in class now, of course. Um, and um, in class, uh, we are on the third floor of Craig Hall. We have redesigned our graduate um, lab uh, and it's very, very well laid out for lots of collaboration, some private space, uh, very good technology. Um, so we're, we're almost complete. We should be done before homecoming uh, this year. Okay. How are the assignments like when, and when are they typically due? So that's gonna be totally dependent upon the faculty member. Um, and that, that faculty member will, will absolutely have those assignments listed on their syllabus, their course syllabus, uh, in terms of what day uh, of the week an assignment is due or when an exam or a quiz is going to be and, and how students should not only just uh, work in, in your discussion board, but how you should uh, interact with other students. So many times it's just not posting your response, but it's it's, it's a collaborative effort in, in, in giving your, your other fellow students feedback and talking back and forth with your faculty member online. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, so everything is going to be driven by that, by, that, by that course syllabus in terms of dates and times and due dates, et cetera. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Cheryl. How I, I many know. credits are considered full-time within the graduate program? Okay. So... From a financial aid perspective, um, it is six hours. Um, if, if you were on campus and you would need to be on campus, 
uh, to do a graduate assistantship because it's a 20 hour per week commitment. Um, things like that typically require nine hours. Um, but um, I would ask that that person to also follow up with the treasurer's office and financial aid uh, to triple check that. But I believe from a financial aid perspective, it's six hours, but I, I, I'd like that person to, you certainly can go to, um, to our, our main university website, ncat.edu, um, and then um, go to the search bar and type in treasurer's office or financial aid office, and, and that'll, that their office will come up and you'll be able to ask that question to them. Okay, thank you. Does the plan of study change if you have prerequisites? Yes. Typically, the email that we will send, um, not typically, always, the email that we will send will tell you, hey, you, you have these, these three or these two or these one or these four um, foundation course requirements. Please place them at the background or foundation, co foundation course requirement um, side of the, um, the um, form. I'm trying to pull the form up now. Can everybody, see, can you see that form, Joe? Yes. Okay, so at the bottom of the second page, there is a place here at the bottom um, where you can see my cursor prerequisite under background courses. So you would list one, two, three, or four, how many that you may have. Um, so accounting 608, fall 2019, all right? So of course, when you do that, you're gonna to have to come back up here and take, you, 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 you're not gonna be able to start all of your, your, your core courses, so you have to change this completion term accordingly. So if you have to take three foundation courses in the fall of 2019, you obviously won't be taking these first three courses in the fall of 2019. So these are gonna be now changed to fall 20, to, excuse me, spring 2020. And then these are going to be changed uh, to um, fall um, 2020. And these are going to be changed to spring 2021 and so on. So you'll need to make the adjustment on the completion term of the graduate plan of study, depending upon how many foundation courses you have to take. Okay. Um, is there good career placement for students in the data science field? Uh, tremendous uh, career, career placement uh, in data science. Um, <clears throat> so, so of course, we don't have a data science concentration for the MBA program, um, but, but data science is, is, is the big sister or little sister uh, family member with the data analytics, big data. Um, and and that's, that's a, a very highly sought after skill set from um, from many many employees across the board uh, so we have a we have a um, uh, several programs in science and technology that um, you may want to look at as well okay our three our three classes per semester considered a heavy load for part-time students working full-time um, so that's a question that that you know, it's going to have to be answered by that individual. I mean, it's, it's, it's some of our students do three courses uh, per semester um, from an online, some of our online students do three. Some of our online students will do two. Um, and that, that, whether it's two or three is going to be dependent upon um, that person's, you know, life. So if it's kids and marriage and work and, and, and work is, is, is super heavy, uh, then maybe that person will decide to do two courses or, 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 or maybe if it's all foundation courses at first, the foundation courses are not quite as, 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 as um, demanding as the graduate level courses, you might try three um, graduate, I mean, uh, foundation courses or, um, you know, let me, let me, I, I want to give you one other um, piece to look at, and this is at students. Um, and you go down here, um, updated academic calendar, and you scroll over to fall 2019, and here it is. 
this is another piece of information that every single person on this call needs because this is the you know late registration when registration opens when it ends um, you can see August 27th is the last day to drop a course and receive financial credit all right um, August 20 October the 28th is the last day to withdraw from a course without a grade evaluation all right um, last day to withdraw from the university without great evaluation, November 6th. So we, so you, you just want to make sure you know all these dates, all these drop dates, so that if you take three or four or two, and you get into a situation where, my goodness, um, I think I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm doing well, and I think that my life is not going to change in terms of uh, the, 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 the degree of complexity that I'm experiencing at work right now, and I'm going to have to drop this course. So, so you need to know when you need to have that done by. So as you're looking at your, your, your grades in the class, upcoming exams, um, you can gauge where you are because what you don't want to do is stay in a course, think you can stick it out, let both drop dates pass and end up having a C uh, in a class. You don't want that. A C will put you in academic probation. Anything below a 3.0 is academic probation. And we, and we don't want you on that. You certainly don't want to make an F in a class. Sometimes Fs are irrecoverable, depending upon when you make it, because you're going to have to take and make very high grades to pull your average back up to a 3.0. And sometimes that's, that's really difficult to do, just, just, just mathematically almost impossible. So, so you, you want to, you know, first of all, study to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I'm sure every person on this line is, is not going to be in that situation. But you want to also be, be wise as it relates to knowing deadlines. So if you need to drop a course, you know when, you, when, when that deadline is. Okay. Another question. Uh, if you weren't offered any financial aid, can you still apply for scholarships through the school? Um, yes. This student was... This student did her FAFSA, but was only offered a loan. So how, how can they qualify for anything else? So, of course, I, I, I've, I go through the FAFSA woes as well, because we have two, I have a grad student and I have a, um, an undergraduate student, both of my daughters. And uh, the, the net family contribution uh, is not the number that I want to see. <laughs> and therefore, you don't you don't qualify for for any any aid. It's all loans. Uh, so I feel your pain. Whoever asked that question, uh, and so therefore you have to be creative. And there are other um, means of applying for merit based scholarships. Um, there are certain grants that may be available. Um, certainly, you are more than welcome to contact the graduate college that we talked about. Sometimes the graduate college has funding as it relates to merit-based uh, pay, um, excuse me, merit-based scholarships. So, so um, you know, I would encourage you to contact the graduate college and ask. Also, um, just just looking out on the website at, at, at opportunity, Thurgood, uh, Thurgood Marshall College Fund Hennessy, that's $30,000 award. So it may not help you for this semester, but if you win the award, uh, it's, a, it's a, certainly a, will help your, your life uh, in terms of your um, paying for your MBA. Okay. I um, have a student that would like to know how they can distinguish core courses from electives on the plan of study. So your, your core courses are, are going to be the ones that are going to be earlier in or early in your, your your time here. Let me see if I can go back um, and put this up. Do I need to begin, uh, Joe? Yes, swap again. You're in good shape now. Okay. So we're going to post this up online, and I think there are already some um, – um, references to this out on NCATMBA.com. Um, but when you go back and you look at the, um, the classes, and here we are. 
So these are the core courses. Um, so you'll, you'll have a copy of this presentation out online, uh, but I believe that the eight core courses are already up there anyway. Um, these are the, are, are, are the, are the core courses. Um, and all of the concentration courses um, per concentration are also online. There's a, there's a curriculum guide. Let me go to that. Let me just, let me, let me, your, the one-stop shop for a lot of things will be NCATMBA.com. Um, so we're back on the NCATMBA.com site. So if you go to programs, if you go to course descriptions, and let's just say the person is human resource management. All right. Or let's, let me see. And click here for the curriculum guides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oops, Joe, we have a page not found. That's not good. Okay. The uh, mm -hmm. doc, the university is changing their website uh, this week, so. Uh, we will, you know, make sure that that points to the right place after the website changes are made. So we also have these. Um, this is the main university website. I do apologize for that error. It's supposed to be there, but it's not. But our technology folks are going to get that straight as soon as possible. Um, so when you go to the main website of the university, www.nk.edu, and, um, and you click on academics, um, we were fortunate enough uh, to have our program listed um, on the on the white side of the bar. So you just click on MBA, and it takes you there. Um, this is our internal site, and our concentrations are here. Um, so HRM, and here's here it is. So these are the core courses. I'll make it a little bigger for you um and the concentration courses and so you can you can take a look at, at this and you can compare it to your plan of study so you can know that these are concentrations and these are cores and when you talk to us you know depending upon how far you've gotten maybe after the first semester you've taken your uh econ 708 so so and oh by the way this is not in the right order these are just the curriculum uh, the graduate plan of study, we've put them in the order that they need to be in, all right? Um, so, but, but again, there, there can be some modifications to that, but we need to work with you to make sure that, we're, that you're modifying it correctly so you're not taking something uh, out of order and you're in the class and you needed to have uh, finance 750 and you hadn't had it yet and they're talking about things you have no idea what they're talking about. So, so, so working with us. Uh, but, but what we put out online, um, with, with, with those plan of studies are um, what uh, you should you should plan on following. Okay, and I wanted to add, there are no electives in the MBA program. You have foundation courses, you have core courses, but we don't have electives. <laughs> You have prerequisites, foundations, and cores, but we don't have electives. Correct. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Right. Any other questions? Cheryl, did you see that anonymous uh, question? Can you? Um, no, sir, I did oh. not. Okay. Um, no, sir, I did not. Okay, it says, uh, here's the question, uh, with some MBA programs as a required international experience before graduation, is this the same uh, at NCANT's MBA? No, so it's, it's not a requirement that you have international experience before you graduate, but um, we certainly encourage individuals to get involved um, with our global programs. 
um, so that when you see trips that are uh, moving forward um, and, and, and you hear about opportunities to, to travel abroad, um, uh, that, that you take full advantage of it. One of our, one of our partners uh, associated with our executive advisory uh, committee, uh, I'll even name that partner, John Deere, uh, they have um, really established a great, great global studies program um, that students can take advantage of. So uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's encouraged. Uh, I think it, 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 it further differentiates you as an MBA student when you graduate, uh, but it's not a requirement. Well, there are no other open questions. All right. Well, listen, thank you all again. Um, you'll, you'll be receiving continued information from us. I think there are about 27 or so of you online. So um, I think uh, that's pretty much all of the, um, uh, the um, well, percentage of our, of our online um, folks that, that, that were, uh, that were um, admitted into our program. Um, so we, we certainly are excited about um, this cohort of students. And I want to make sure that you get registered and you get settled um, as, as quickly as possible. We wanted to have this, this orientation early enough so that you've got a couple of weeks to kind of get your accounts right and any holds that may be on your accounts and getting settled in your right courses, getting your graduate plan and study set up. So please, let's, let's be responsive. And, um, and, um, and we'll get these things worked through, all right? Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. And hopefully we'll, we'll look to, um, to hear from you uh, virtually uh, very, very soon.